What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Gonna be showing off another new deck from Standard Format, and I'm excited about this one. This is Guard of War GX. Now, there are about a million ways to build Guard of War GX right now, but something that I saw on PTCGO that I'm really excited about is the potential to play Swampert with Guard of War. Now, obviously, we got Sylveon with Guard of War. That's something that almost everybody is doing. Sylveon is very, very good. Plea GX, insanely good, but Magical Ribbon, absolutely stunning in a format where it's very difficult to set up, right? Uh, just the draw supporters are not all that great. And then going hand in hand with that, you can actually use Sylveon GX to set up Swamper, and that power draw ability can allow you to draw through your deck and actually get the cards you need in order to get the Guard of War GX deck going. Now, you do not by any means need the Swampert, in here, but it's something that I'm testing out. It's kind of the fun of trying out a new format. Can Swampert be used as additional draw in stage two decks? I think if there's any deck that can pull it off, it probably is Gardevoir GX. And then something even more cool that I have in here is I have the Super Boost Energy, which you could play and you actually could attack with this Swampert, right? It does like 160 damage with the Super Boost on here. So it is a non-GX attacking option, which is something that this deck does not have. So it is something to consider, not only that, but then Super Boost can also be an insane boost to Gardevoir's uh, infinite force attack as well. If you were to take out the Swampert line, you would just put in more consistency cards. There's not really a lot of draw in here. You might play one Oranguru potentially, though I don't really think that your hands are ever gonna be quite small enough. You can see that we are using the Apricorn Maker engine here as well with all of the Nest Balls, the four Nest Ball, and the Apricorn Maker engine has just been absolutely fantastic. So I really love that. We're going to get in here with Gardevoir though and see how things go. I've been playing against a lot of different Gardevoir lists online and the deck is definitely a top tier. I'm talking probably like top three threat to look out for in the upcoming standard format at your events, things like that. Cardi is just insanely good. Uh, not only that, I mean, it knocks out Ray. Rayquaza Vigavolt is another deck that, you know, could be good. Uh, it does struggle against metal decks, though. So uh, that is unfortunate. Metal decks are very good right now. I've seen a lot of Solgaleo decks, a lot of Metagross decks kind of popping up. And that is troublesome for Gardevoir. So that is kind of the only thing that is stressful about playing Guardi right now is the, just the sheer number of metal decks. It looks like that we are playing against a Ludicargo deck, so kind of an old school deck reimagined with these reprint cards here. I am going to, let's see, get things started off here by Ultra Balling, I think, probably for, and I wanna get, see, I do have just like a Guardi in my hand. I wanna get like the Apicorn, I kinda want to do that but not really any point. I think I'd rather just Ultra Ball away uh, this Guzma and maybe the Curlia. I think I'm just gonna do that. And then I can just go get myself an Eevee and then evolve up into the Eevee and Cynthia. Like that probably is what we're gonna do. And it's unfortunate, yeah, we have like the you know, we have the rare candy and the guardian hand, but I think just getting the Sylveon out is just such a consistent way to get this deck up and moving. We do play four nest balls. So here, you know, we have a pretty decent shot at drawing into some more nest balls and things like that, but we didn't, that's all good though. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this next turn, I can get the Sylveon into the active position and then I will tap the Lele GX for Apricorn Maker, go get two nest balls and start to set the deck up from there, which is pretty cool. Now, Ludicolo uh, is pretty cool. It's a stage two Pokemon and it has an ability, Swing Dance maybe, something like that, uh, allows you to draw a card off the top. And then obviously, Macargo has an ability, Smooth Over, which allows you to stack a card from your deck onto the top of your deck. So there's tons of synergy between these two fellas over here. But, you know, I'm a little bit worried about getting a, you know, three energy onto a stage two here. That is a non-GX. That does concern me a little bit. It's probably my only concern with this archetype. That being said, there is obvious just built-in synergy to the deck. We do have Aqua Patch, which you can use to get your water energy onto the Ludicolo. That's pretty cool. And then double colorless energy can power up the attack as well. I believe it's a water and two colorless energy is the cost of the attack. It does something like 70 or 80 plus uh, 10 for each 
Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent's. I think that's it. So that if both you and your opponent have fullback, I'm actually just going to go ahead and look it up since like I'm on the computer here. Ludicolo. Let's see what in the world does this Ludicolo do so that I can actually like look at it while my opponent's playing. All right, it's my turn. Okay, so we didn't get to quite look it up. That's fine. We'll figure it out in due time here. Think that I am just going for the, yeah, the Lele, and then we're going to yaw, get a supporter card. Gonna get that Apricorn Maker, and then we are gonna Nest Ball, probably just getting, I actually, I like getting, we don't actually have a draw supporter, so I actually like getting the Mudkip and setting up the Swamp Root. That's kind of like how I like to get this deck rolling here. And that should be fine. So we're just going to Apricorn Maker, grab myself two Nest Balls, and then we're going to get one Ralts and then one... I don't think that like I'm getting knocked out anytime soon here. So we're going to get one Ralts and then one of the Mudkips here. And then we can just retreat this Lele. Uh, let's not that guy. That guy. Good. And we can just retreat this Lele and then use uh, Sylveon GX's... What, what is it? Fairy Ribbon? Magical Ribbon. Yes, we're going to use Magical Ribbon there in order to start to set this deck up. We already have Guardi in hand, so that's good. Let's retreat, and I have Guardi, I have Curlia, I'm cool. And then we're just going to start using that like trade thingy, you know? We're just going to start using the trade thing, yeah. So we're going to get two Rare Candies, uh, I think. Or I could get a Cynthia. We get a Rare Candy. I actually like that. Let's get a Rare Candy, a Swampert and then a Cynthia, and just start to kind of draw out of this hand here like that. And then once we are set up with this, you know, we can kind of get the engine uh, up and rolling. Really, the Swamper is the backbone of this whole deck. The way that I built it, the Swampert is the backbone of the whole deck. You just use Sylveon Swampert kind of in conjunction to get your Gardevoirs consistently set up. And I like that because I don't really love any of the draw supporters in format other than just like Cynthia is like the only good one. And so for a deck like Gardevoir that just wants to draw into DCEs and energy power draw is actually really cool just because it gives you just that boost in draw that this deck so badly wants. All right, there he is. I wanted to, oh no, he's gone. All right, I was gonna say, I want to see him, but here he comes. All right, he's into play. We've got ourselves Ludicolo. So here he is, does 70, it is Swing Dance, I was correct on that. Does 70 damage plus 10 more damage for each Pokemon to play both yours and your opponent's. So obviously I don't really wanna max out the amount of Pokemon I have in play. What, my opponent's escape roping. I don't think that they're even attacking me this turn. So I think I'm just gonna go into a Lele here, that's fine. I don't really think that they're going to do any damage. They probably, you know, if anything, they have a DCE. Yeah, they're not doing anything here. So I've got a field blower. Let's go ahead and rare candy onto my mud kit and get that swamper out. It's pretty cool. I could uh, use power draw and see if I draw into a rare candy, but I'm just going to be a little bit more conservative than that. Let's just go ahead and I think we want to, let's, let's put that there. And then let's Cynthia. And then I might draw into an escape rope, in which case then I can like plea GX. That would have been pretty cool. Okay, we didn't yet. So let's just power draw. We're gonna trade away that and see if we can get anything else going on here. We've got an EV that I don't need. So let's just ultra ball away the EV there. Get myself another Ralts, and then we could get a second. Uh, Guardi set up here next turn. So you can see how now the deck is kind of like sustained itself. Like, yeah, in a way I am maxing out the amount of damage that this Ludicolo can do to me because I have completely, oh, I have completely, um, you know, maxed out my bench. But that's fine. I can plea these things, which will be kind of annoying for my opponent. That's kind of my thought here, is that I might plea and like start to set up that way while I get some energy onto my dudes here. Now, I am also deciding between two and three Tapu Lele GX. I'm playing three right now because I really like to get the turn one Apricorn Maker and also just to set up. But I could imagine playing two. You could just play two and two Apricorn Makers. I think I'm only playing one Apricorn Maker in my list right now. And that's because with the Apricorn Maker uh, engine, it is like really good to get the early Apricorn Maker, but you don't exactly like need it, need it. 
need it it uh you know with four nest balls you kind of just have like a decent shot of actually just drawing into nest balls without apricorn maker playing supporters like you know cynthia and things like that and just drawing into nest balls naturally so this has been a little bit of a slow setup for me personally but that's fine we're just going to start off by power drawing away that swampert here and see what we get we got judge and we've got two guardies so that's really good and we also have some energy to boot so let's go ahead and start to get these guys into play uh, rare candy guardy and then let's see we can guzma and plea gx which would be pretty good i could pick up both of my opponent's dudes over there and then really kind of just go to town that would be fantastic. Also, if I bring that Macargo into the active position, it might be kind of tough for my opponent to really deal with that. So I think I am just going to start to throw energy onto a Guardi here and then just like plea GX. And then I am going to judge like the, the next turn and really try to like mess with my opponent's setup. So we're going to bring up this Macargo here. And yeah, let's just plea GX. And then I would like them to pick up both of their Ludicolos. And then the hope is that, you know, we're going to plea and then we are going to judge this next turn. And hopefully they can't get the evolution pieces back down. And then I'm just going to roll through the team here with a combination of uh, Fairy Wind and then also Infinite Force. And we should be pretty cool. At most, my opponent can get like one Ludicolo into play and they didn't. They just have this Lombard. Uh, let's see, it's got an ability. If this Pokemon has a water energy attached to it, has no retreat cost, that's fine. I don't really mind any of that. They do have Aqua Patch in their hand. I'm sure they're like trying to get an attack going. I just think that, you know, of the non EX, non GX decks in format, I don't think that this is necessarily going to end up being the most consistent one, which is funny though, because, you know, obviously the engine is beautiful, right? Smooth over and swing dance together are just absolutely perfect. But the power level of the deck, unfortunately, I think is just a little bit low. It's a deck that like wants to pre wants to play Brooklet Hill. You want to play Brooklet Hill to be able to help draw. Uh, I am going to judge first and then I am going to power draw out of the judge. That is my yep that's my thought there so we are going to power draw away that nest ball don't need that and juice we got the juice all right so now i think i just like continue just loading energy onto one of these guys so i could score a big one hit knockout here eventually think what, three six nine twelve 15 that's fine let's just throw another one of these here and then we're just gonna fairy wind just gonna start doing that that's cool and we got to actually start taking prizes here but like i was saying i think that the this deck here like wants to play it like wants to play shrine of punishment it wants to play brooklet hill it does play brooklet hill right but then shrine would also be really good since you're doing what 70 plus potentially 10 170 choice band 200 you really don't want to be doing you know just 200 damage you really want to be doing like 230 or something like that which you know honestly like 170 damage and uh, no that's if your opponent maxes out their bench which they're not always going to do i kind of started lele and had some weird things going on so my uh, my bench is maxed out but i don't think that it's going to end up mattering here i think you know for a three energy attack i think i'd rather be playing empoleon honestly which empoleon just does uh, 20 damage times the amount of bench pokemon you and your opponent have so i think i just empoleon is just the better stage two for you know your money there uh you know if you and your opponent have maxed out benches then you're doing 200 damage choice band you can hit 230 and though I do think that Empoleon also kind of struggles with that issue of just wanting to play Brooklet and Shrine of Punishment. I think Empoleon really wants to play Shrine of Punishment as well because you want to just bring your opponent's attack costs or uh, bring their HP down into your one hit KO realm, right? That's just what we want to do. So I don't have any sort of one hit KO yet. So let's just uh, let's power draw here and try to be careful not to deck out. Yeah, let's try to. 
Let's try to not deck out, okay? So that's good. There's a super boost energy. Oh, that's that's really good. So now we could actually just go in with Swampert and start taking one-hit KOs, which would be pretty cool. Uh, though my opponent might be able to knock me out if they get anything going with that low tad there. And that would be something that I'm not exactly looking for. I think I am fine to just 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I am probably fine to just retreat uh, and go in with this Guardi here. And let's just get rid of that DCE. And then I'm going to save my super boost. I'm going to save my resources here. I say 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah, let's just, let's just infinite force here. I'm going to save my resources just in case I need the super boost, uh, you know, for anything else. In case I want to go in with Swampert and take a knockout, that, like, could be good. At a certain point, I think Swampert just, like, cleans the game up with the super boost energy, which is insane. I don't think that my opponent's going to score a one-hit knockout here. I mean, I, in fact, I kind of know that they're not going to. They can only hit, like I said, 170 damage max, and they'd have to go get some other Pokemon in order to do that. So I'm um, more or less cool. Super Boost is like kind of cheeky in this deck. Like you definitely don't need Super Boost energy, but I think like if you're playing Swampert, why not? You know, uh, just a one energy attack that allows you to do 160 damage. And if you are playing the Swampert, you just like you just play the Super Boost because it gives you that non EX, non GX option that you can poke with. Uh, also, the, your odds of having three stage twos in play are much higher if you are playing Swampert because he is a stage two. So you just have like a better chance of getting that all going. Let's see here. So we have DC. I think we just like. Uh, retreat and then i could just knock out with this other guardy that's probably the safer play so that you know my dude doesn't get just like knocked out but i don't really need this swampert anymore so let's just get in there with swampert just because i want to i think that's fair let's just let's just make it happen just to see the look on my opponent's face when i actually hydro pump here <laughs> and uh oh my gosh why did i only do a hundred what am i doing wrong uh times the amount of water energy attached to this pokemon so is it 80 plus 20 more times the amount of water energy. Why is this not counting it? Hmm. Did I misread any cards here? Where, what did I what did I misread? Okay. So the super boost energy, right? This card provides colorless energy while it's attached to a stage two. It provides every type of energy, but only provides one at a time. If you have three more stage two in play, it provides every type of energy, but only provides four energy at a time. So I'm not exactly sure why that didn't count as 160 damage. We're doing two, four, six, eight. This is the first time I've ever had this kind of come up. So that's interesting to me. I probably should have just taken the knockout with the Guardi, but I wanted to wanted to make it happen with the Swampert, and I'm not sure why it just didn't work. It just didn't. It provided four energy, but why didn't it do 160? I have three stage twos in play. I just don't know. Uh, truthfully, I just have no idea. So that's unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, but it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna make it work anyway. So let's see here. We'll throw the we'll throw the guardy up, and then I'm gonna end up escape roping because I kind of need to like get around. I actually have just no idea what happened there with the Swampert. So I'm going to check after this game or, you know, we're going to we're going to figure it out. So it says, you know, it says if you only have one stage, it's only one energy at a time. Or is it that it only provide it can't provide four waters? It can only provide one at a time. Is that it? I my impression is that it provides four of everything at once if you have three stage twos in play. So that was my thought, but I guess not. Let's uh, escape rope and see what my opponent brings up. Uh, and then I think I may end up just like Sylveoning them, uh, you know, with <laughs> Fairy Wind, which is cool because I can actually knock out anything on my opponent's side of the field with Fairy Wind. So that's very good. And then let's see, we can Secret Spring as well. Let's just throw some more Fairy Energies onto this guy. That's very good. And then uh, pretty much no reason to Cynthia yet. Uh, I've attached my DC. We're good to go. All right, let's just fairy win. Knock out this low tad here and continue taking prizes. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what in the world is going on with my boost energy, man. I was like, I was talking about it with some friends today. It was like theorizing. That's why I wanted to do it because I wanted to just like see it happen. While this card is attached to a stage two Pokemon, it provides every type of energy but only provides but provides only one energy at a time. 
Um, so it's like rainbow, right? Uh, it only provides one, but if you have three or more stage twos in play, it provides every type of energy, but provides four energy at a time. So it should provide just four waters, right? And then this is, this attack does 20 more damage times the amount of water energy attached to this Pokemon. So I don't get it, because it, it allowed me to announce the attack. So it was counting as the four. It just didn't count as four waters for some reason. So I don't, I just don't know. I'm, I'm stumped. I, that, I think that that should have done 160 damage, in my opinion. But uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, that's fine. Y'all can let me know why in the comments below. I just thought, why? Why didn't it work? Uh, uh, I don't know. Anyways, I love the Swampert. So we're going to see if we can still win this game, even though, um, even though the Swampert play didn't work out the way that I thought that it should have. Uh, duly noted, though, on PTCGO here. Yeah, don't ever try that again. Uh, and uh, yeah, there we go. It's fine. We're gonna we're gonna make it happen. So, wonder what I'm looking like on the energy side of things. I think I'm like looking kind of sad. Yeah, we're definitely a little bit sad. Five, six. I only have seven. I actually all my fairy energy are accounted for. I only have double colorless energy left in the deck, and I have two left in the deck so that is a little bit sad but i only have three prizes left to take how many guzmas do i have down two guzmas so i have one guzma left all i really need to do is get I this thing should be hitting for 160. um all i need to do is get another stage two into play and then my swamper can attack i guess for 100 even though i don't know why it's only 100. Does this, it doesn't like decrease damage down to it? I was gonna say, there's no sort of like buffs in play, right? Like there's nothing that I'm missing. It's just, uh, I'm gonna have to consult my friends. I'm gonna like, as soon as I'm done recording, I'm gonna be like, why didn't it work? And then we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to see it as either like, you know, buggy or I am just like a total goon and just like forgetting uh, something probably clearly obvious or just fundamentally don't understand the way that that attack or that card works. But I, I think it should be fine because it would provide like 30 more times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. It would provide four energy for infinite force, right? Like I'm positive that it would do that. So I don't really know. All right, so thank goodness that guy held on for dear life there. I think that I am going to, Oh boy. All right, let's rare candy into that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. And then let's, I don't think there's any point in like field blowing. Uh, let's see, does that have a DC on it? I don't think there's any point in field blowing. I think uh, let's just Cynthia. And then I'm just going to draw different cards. And I need to be kind of careful not to deck out. There's a DCE. So that's good. And then I think what I'm going to do is uh, I don't really want to power draw. I don't really want to be that close to decking out. So let's just like retreat into the Swampert. Uh, we're going to discard the DC. Yeah. And then I think I'm going to save that DC. Mm, and I guess it could go here. And that would probably give me the best chance of being able to win the game. And yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's just hydro boom. All right. So we're doing 100 damage again for some reason. And I have no idea. I just don't. I don't know. But that's fine. That should have been knocked out a long time ago. We've got an escape rope. That's good. I think the only Pokemon that my opponent can really attack with here is, you know, unless they get this thing up and rolling here, I guess they can smooth over into a Ranguru. That's really good. They can give themselves a one of card, you know, whatever they want, which is definitely valuable. I am just like having to fight way harder to win this game than I thought that I should have. And it's probably because <laughs> the Swampert is just not hitting for as much as I had theorized. Ugh. But the Swampert did get out there and it did get in there though i will give it that the swampert did uh did get in there and attack for 100 so that's actually it's like valid in a way because you just uh you don't really have any non-ex non-gx attackers so that's uh you know it's a thing that you need let's see all right we just need choice ban now to finish this game off i think my opponent's conceding they understand that i just have it and that's fine. So we're just gonna promote the Guardi and we just need one energy. That might not happen though, is the thing. It, Cause I do need to find uh, the choice band. I need to find some, there it is. Okay, so we got there and we could take that knockout now. So that's pretty good. I was gonna say, I don't think I actually have Oh, I do have a double colorless energy left in deck, but let's just let's just take that knockout and this game and uh, move on to the next one. So I'm gonna play another one. We're gonna see if we could get this. Uh, we're gonna see if we get this Swampert engine like going a little bit 
a little bit better here and see if we could get uh, just a different different matchup and just get a different uh, you know a different perspective on the deck. I want you guys to kind of see that Swampert engine kind of working and uh, duly noted I will not try to attack with Swampert again but he did get in there. I don't, I don't know why he didn't get in there for more but he did get in there so that that was fun and you know at the end of the day the Swampert engine may end up being a little bit uh, a little bit cheeky like I do uh, looks like we're playing against a metal deck oh, um, I did really like uh, there was a uh, this Raybor deck you know back in the day right and I played Embor with Rayquaza EX and the idea of the deck was that you set up Delphox first right and then you could draw with Delphox and that allowed you to you know kind of once you set up Delphox and Embor you were just like drawing through your deck very aggressively and you would draw into the energy you needed to do well now it looks like i am playing against a medigros shuetti gross deck so this is uh you know this is kind of rough but that's fine actually i can nest ball here and i can turn one judge my opponent maybe that would be good uh, like maybe that just ends up being the play here uh, I don't know. Uh, I can also Apricorn Maker. You know, Apricorn Maker just seems a little bit better. I think we probably just ap Apricorn Maker and we at least start to set up the deck. Yeah, that seems good. All right, do I got some Sylveons in here? Yes, I do. All right, do I have some Swampers? You sure do. All right, so we're going to try and make this happen here. We've got Energy Evolution. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go get our boy Sylveon. We're going to get the full art one this time. And then I'm going to. I guess uh, we could judge would be really good if my opponent just doesn't draw anything, but I think that like we have to try to actually just set up our own deck here and can't really rely on that. So I think judge into, uh, let's get Ralts, uh, and then let's also get ourselves really just the, you know, the Mudkip here is like the way to go. So that turn two, uh, we really just retreat and then judge and can kind of go from there. Like, I'm not going to get two or three guardies turn two. Like, I could, but I didn't. I didn't get one of those escape ropes. I mean, we can't, you know, I'm not going to really start to set, off and set up until we magical ribbon here. So that's probably just the way that that is going to go. So the mudkip will help us to be a little bit aggressive, hopefully, and let's see, my opponent is going for another Lele. I am assuming that they're going to get themselves an Apricorn Maker. It seems to be like what all of the decks are using to set up right now. And for good reason. You guys can see it pretty much is like the optimal startup supporter. But we do have Lily coming down from my opponent, which is also good. If you've got other Ultra Balls in hands, things like that, you know, in your hand, ways to like pair your hand down and get yourself a basic Pokemon is definitely... Definitely a valid option. They're going to be able to Lily for seven here. That's like super good. But I am coming in hot with the turn two judge. Just going to use this fairy energy to retreat my Tapu Lele. I want to save the DCE. DCEs are very valuable, obviously. You can't really get them back except with Plea G. Not Plea, but, uh, you know, whatever. Twilight GX there. It's the only way. What is this? Fire and Metal have no weakness. Okay. Uh, I don't really think that there's any point in playing that Eevee down. I think I want to save that room for Guardies. And then let's just judge. Yeah, we're just going to judge here. Pretty cool. If I get an escape rope, that'd be great. I didn't, but I did get, uh, this is excellent. I got a Ralts and another Nest Ball there. So we're just going to retreat and we're going to be able to Magical Ribbon here. We're really going to go off. I could get two Swamperts. That'd be insane. And I could start to set, <laughs> if I set up two Swamperts, right? I uh, think I want just Guardies, though. I definitely just, just want lots of Guardies. So let's just retreat. And then we'll Magical Ribbon. And we are going to go get ourselves probably, uh, let's see, what do I already have? A rare, I already have a Guardian hand. So we'll just get ourselves two of these, I think. And then we're just going to start power drawing and setting, actually, like a Cynthia there think yeah let's just get a Cynthia and we'll kind of just explode our hand again get a big hand and then maybe we can go off after that so this is the way that like the Swampert engine is supposed to work like you think you know honestly magical ribbon just sticks like way more than it used to because you know people aren't really playing early judge you know most decks are playing maybe one judge if any at all so it's just 
you don't really get judged all that often. As you see, we got, you know, my opponent used Cynthia there, and they're just going to go ahead and set up that way. Now, my ideal turn here probably would be to maybe plea, that's rare candy, into Swampert. I'm going to get that guy going, and then I think that we want to just Cynthia. I'm not going to attach that fairy energy yet, and we're going to see where we go with this hand. We have a Curlia. I'm going to trade away that Sylveon. Got another Cynthia in our hand, so that's very good as well. Now I could just start committing those energies. I think I'm going to Ultra Ball away potentially that other Ralts, and, and I could get myself a second Curlia which could be pretty good. Here, I mean, I'm not using anything, like I'm not using Plea GX this turn or anything like that, so I think we kinda need to start just putting energy into play here uh, as much as we can. So let's, let's throw energy on the Curlia there, and then do I go ahead and Ultra Ball away the Guzma and the Ralts? I think I wanna keep that Guzma there. I don't, yeah, I don't think that I actually do that at all. I think I just Magical Ribbon here, and I get myself everything I need to get going. So I'm going to get myself, let's see, I got a Guardi. I need Rare Candy Guardi. Um, let's get Guardi, and then Rare Candy, and then I have a Guzma, which is good, and probably just we want a, if I get like a super boost energy, I can maybe make something crazy happen. So let's just like see what we can make happen with the super boost. Maybe I get to just like knock out a Metagross with that. Like that would be pretty nuts. Because then I'll have three stage twos in play. Uh, I could start secret springing. Maybe I can Guzma something. Like we'll just we'll just see what we can make happen with that super boost. I kind of like it uh, just as an option to hit things for a huge amount of damage. My opponent just Cynthia's and like hits. They got nothing going on there. So that's like super good for me because I'm just gonna be able to take out that Metang. I have never seen a just have never seen a Metagross deck just draw that poorly. So that's pretty wild stuff there. We've got our three stage twos in play. So let's go ahead and power draw. We can discard that Ralts there, no problem. Get rid of that. We've got another rare candy, and we could get another Guardi into play. That might be a little bit greedy, though, because there's not actually anything in this hand that I want to, uh, that I necessarily want to get rid of. I do want to get rid of that Metang, though. So I think we're just going to go in for that Metang. Let's just attach there, 369, and let's Secret Spring, I think, onto the same one just in case my opponent gets like a crazy turn. I don't necessarily want to reveal that I have this super boost yet. So I'm just gonna keep that. And then if my opponent does manage to get like a Metagross into play next turn, I can potentially just like knock it out in one go. We ended up getting the Guardi there off the prizes. So that's good. I do have a third Guardi then, I and mean, we are just like kind of stunting at this point. We're setting up perfectly. My opponent's probably going to try and hit into this Guardi with their Tapu Lele. I can take two more prizes that way. If they do manage to get a Metagross up here, I could knock it out. See, we're doing 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. It's already got an energy on it, so I think that that could be good. I just don't have the Guzma in hand. Obviously, I wanted to use that Guzma to knock out the Metang, just slow my opponent down as much as I can. Uh, definitely the move. Now, I could have knocked out the Lele. I could have escape roped and then guzma up the Lele and knocked it out. I just think that that's kind of a weaker play overall because then, you know, uh, my opponent could have two Metagross in play and two Metagross in play, you know, is where they can kind of start making things happen. With only one Metagross in play, they're really not threatening a whole lot to my Guardi deck, and I can kind of safely just build up a gigantic Gardevoir and sweep with it. So I suspect that they're going for a Metagross here and that we'll see a Metagross hit the field. I think that we just knock out the Lele though. We don't actually try to, and we'll kind of see what I end up drawing off of the power draw here and go from there. But I don't think that we necessarily target down that Metagross. I could target down a Beldum, I guess, uh, which could be cool. But I just, uh, I think that I probably have to just start being aggressive. I save the super boosts for eventually trying to knock out this Metagross in one clean hit. And hopefully I could just draw into some energy here to start piling. I did get a Guzma. 
Okay, so that's like kind of interesting. I can escape rope and then Guzma up that Metagross and just knock it out. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. I just knock it out. Like that seems pretty good. So let's let's power draw first and see what we end up drawing into off of this. Do we get another energy? Another fairy energy would have really helped my case there. Like I could have definitely justified it then. Uh, this it feels like a little bit greedy to do this, um, but you know my opponent will just have a lele and like nothing else. I feel like uh, that being said, I could just go in. I feel like I probably just go in and attach a DCE here, knock out this lele, wait for my opponent to knock me out with Metagross, then go in and knock my opponent's guy out. You know that's probably the more stable play. Uh, not going to lie, uh, but then again, just taking out that Metagross would feel really cool. So I think I think that I just uh, am a little bit more patient. Let's see if we got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Uh, I could make it happen there with the, with the second Guardi. So I think I am just going to take out the active here, save some Guzmas, you know, kind of save that stuff for later in the game. And the reasoning for this is that this is just, it's more responsible with my energy. I don't have like an unlimited amount of energy. So I don't want to put all of my energy onto a heavily damaged Gardevoir in order to knock out that Metagross. Ideally, what I want to do is I want, you know, if my opponent has Guzma, that'd be interesting. They don't though. So this is like where we really kind of take my opponent out because uh, now we can put the super boost energy onto this Gardevoir here. Guzma up that Metagross and just knock it out. We're doing 3, 6, uh, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. We should get a knockout if the boost energy decides to give me credit for 4. I think it should give me credit for 4. But maybe the card's broken on PTCGO. Or I just fundamentally do not understand how the card is supposed to work. So one of those two things is, uh, is an option. Let's just power draw away one of these Ultra Balls. See what else we get going on here. I think I am just going to Secret Spring onto him. And then I am going to attach my super boost energy and a choice ban. And if this doesn't give me a knockout, I don't know what in the world should. So let's just let's just try that out. All right, infinite force. And I was going to say, if that doesn't give me a knockout, that gave me 300. So my opponent just is going to scoop at that. Didn't have time to do the math. I'm hoping that it gave me credit for four uh, you know, gave me credit for all four fairy energies. I'm assuming that it did there. I think that uh, I think that it did, but I don't know. Uh, either way, that was pretty good. We'll roll one more game with the Guardi here, see if uh, we could get more of like a kind of back and forth game with me and my opponent and see if, uh, you know, see if the engine it sets up the way that is supposed to. Playing against to sink a ship, it looks like this could be a control Zorark type deck. I'm seeing darkness, I'm seeing psychic, and I'm seeing fire. So I'm assuming that this is probably probably Zorark Macargo if I had to guess. And this is a pretty stellar turn one, except for the fact that I do not have any fairy energy in my hand. Otherwise, it is pretty good. So I'll take it though. Uh, my opponent does get a mulligan, so that's great. Maybe I can rip a fairy off of my mulligan cards. And yes, this looks like control Zorark to me. So it should be a close matchup. I think that I'm favored, but we'll see how it ends up going. Yes, I'll draw my card. A Curlia. Oh, there's the fairy energy. All right. So let's hope that uh, I guess we Apricorn Maker first, right? So let's see if I actually do have my other Sylveon in deck. I do. So that's good. We're going to go for two Nest Balls and we're just going to go get our gentleman here, Ralts and Mudkip. Okay. So that's good. And we have an incredible starting hand. This is literally perfect. Okay. So we're going to get Ralts here. And then we're going to get ourselves uh, also one of these guys, Mr. Mudkip. And then we're going to go in and we're going to energy evolution, get ourselves a turn one Sylveon as well, which is very good. And now uh, I can Ultra Ball again. I could Ultra Ball away the Sylveon and Ralts to get myself another 
Ross, but I, I don't really think that there is uh, too much of a point to that. I think that I probably just saved my Ultra Ball. I don't really need to go in like that. I can just kind of evolve up a little bit more slowly. Or I could Magical Ribbon for two. Uh, I kind of like that too. Yeah, let's let's do it. All right, I am going to do it. We're going to get ourselves another Ralts here. Very good. Yep. And I do have Guzma. So I was thinking like it might be a little irresponsible because I leave myself like kind of vulnerable here without any out to a supporter. The Ultra Ball in your hand is just a guaranteed, uh, you know, guaranteed out to a supporter. If maybe somehow, you know, my opponent crushing hammers this energy off and I just end up just, you know, high and dry, right? Then that would be a good out for me to have to go get myself a Lele and to draw out of the situation. So it is a little bit all in going for that Ralts there, but it ended up being fine. Uh, there isn't Flare Grunt, you know, in format anymore. So I don't really need to worry about that. And then from here, we just Magical Ribbon. We're going to go get ourselves uh, a Swamper, a Gardevoir, and also a Cynthia and we're gonna just get going from here and I've got the double rare candy in hand that's beautiful I've got choice band as well we should just be off to the races at this point point. and you guys can see the Swamper engine is just very easy to set up I mean obviously even if you just don't start I was worried about this at first when I was worried I thought that like if you don't start Sylveon, then like you're never getting the Swampert out. It's just not true. I'm playing two copies of Escape Rope, which is, I, in my opinion, just the best Switch card in format right now. I think it is just so good. Uh, we've got another Ralts too, so that's incredible. Let's just go ahead and Rare Candy into our Swampert. And then we're also going to Rare Candy into Gardevoir. And I think that it's probably just beneficial for us to save that choice band. No real point in slapping that down. So let's just Cynthia here, draw some more cards, see what we get. Uh, we can accelerate a little bit. I could Ultra Ball something and go get myself uh, Curlia. You know, we're going to actually just... Uh, Secret Spring. Okay, yeah, we're going to Secret Spring. That's fine. Uh, it's not what I meant to do. I meant to click this guy and Power Draw, and I would like to discard the Nest Ball. So we're going to do that. See what we get off of this. Got ourselves Field Blower. I think I'm going to Ultra Ball away the Field Blower and potentially the Cynthia. Honestly, we don't really need that many of those now that we're kind of set up. And we're just going to get ourselves another Curlia here. See, I could set up another Swampert. I just don't really think that there's too much point in that. I'll just, I'll be fine. And then we can just Magical Ribbon. So it's unfortunate. Like if my opponent does really get going here, they could, let's see, we've got, we could get an Escape Rope. I like that just to kind of get this thing out of the active position, unless it, you know, in case it doesn't get knocked out. Uh, I don't actually think I need it though. Let's just get ourselves a Guardi. Uh, and then let's get some energies too. Let's get that super boost energy. And then let's also get myself um, Guardi super boost. And then I have a Cynthia in hand. I have a choice band in hand. Let's get a fairy energy too. So done. And we're just going to get all of this stuff so that next turn we should be able to knock out a Zorark or something like that. And at this rate, like we should be able to kind of just go in. It's going to be fantastic. Like my opponent probably won't be able to deal with the fact that I, you know, I'm taking one hit chaos. Now, I don't ever want to plea in this matchup. We are playing against Control Zorark. They are probably playing Enhanced Hammers and things like that. So I do have to be kind of careful that I don't just get stranded out here. Uh, let's see, my opponent is playing, oh, Champions Festival. That is awesome. It's a foreign Champions Festival. So that is amazing. Super, super cool. And, uh, you know, what is that? I think it's Spanish, but don't, don't, don't quote me on that. I don't actually know. So looked, looked kind of Spanish to me. So, um, that is cool. I actually have never seen a foreign card on PTCGO before. So that is a first time for me. I didn't know that that was a thing that, uh, that you could, that, you know, I thought that they would just, they just translated them all to kind of wherever, you know, wherever your server was from. So that's kind of just what I was thinking. Let's see, my opponent's doing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 130, 130. They're a little bit short, so they didn't quite get there. But let's see what we can do off of this. 
Here, I think we start off with potentially power draw. Yeah, let's just start off with power draw away this EV here. See if we can draw into some more energies. We definitely got more energy, so that's fine. I actually don't mind just <laughs> let's see if we could get another Swamper into play. See, what am I able to knock out this next turn? I can do, uh, let's, first of all, we're definitely doing that. So that's fine. And now I have three stage twos in play. So I can go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. I can just knock out a Zorark, which is pretty busted. So let's uh, let's just see if we could do it. All right, so I should, right? I'm doing three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, choice band 21, right? Uh, any questions, any arguments? I think that I think that we're just good. So let me know. This this is going to be the real test to see if this card actually works the way that I think it does. And then I think I'm going to slap down another mug kip just in case. You never know. All right, and then let's infinite force. We should. Yes, we did. Okay, so it worked for infinite force. But why did it not work the way that I thought it would for Swampert? I have no idea. So this Gardevoir out here doing a ton of damage. I think Super Boost is like really good with Guardi. I think it just, especially uh, in just a slower format and in a format where you could actually just go grab it with Sylveon, I think it is just like really good. I don't see any reason not to play Super Boost in Guardi right now. It could just give you those surprise one-hit KOs that maybe your opponent didn't necessarily think that you were capable of getting. And at this point, like, I don't really even care if my opponent enhanced hammers this. They're not one-hit KOing this Gardevoir, so the Gardevoir should be able to just completely snowball my opponent's team now and, you know, take another two prizes, and then I should have enough kind of gas in the tank to be able to finish Finish the matchup off here. Uh, you know, I've only got two fairy energy allocated right now. I've only got two fairy energy in play. Now, Garbodor is not something that I knew that my opponent's deck played. So let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight items in the discard pile. So that is a little bit sketchy. Got to be a little bit careful of that. And then my opponent is just sending this Zork out to just get, oh, just to get completely blasted. Oh, geez. Okay. At this point, I think that I can probably just like judge my opponent and go from there. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Yeah, we're doing plenty of damage there. So let's just uh, let's just judge and see like a different hand. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then we can power draw out of this. Oh, yeah, we've got a second power draw. At this point, I need to be like actually careful of like decking out, but I do want to get, I just want to get the second one out just to like, say that we did it all right and then how many rare candies do i have down? i have three rare candies down how many how many rare candies three rare candies i probably should have been a little bit more careful because like you know it's uh you know it's a little bit irresponsible to just be getting rid of all this stuff when i have like garbage to worry about but it's fine we're just going to infinite force knock this thing out and then the goal is going to be to just like finish the game on a lele or something like that all i need is guzma so really the point of getting the two swamperts out or so that we just have a board position where we could just draw guzma for game right no matter what my opponent does to my hand we're just gonna we're gonna try to bring up that Lele and knock it out or just anything really. We're gonna try and slap some energies down Guzma for game. So I'm not really worried about Trash Lance at all. I don't, they're not one hit KOing the clean Guardi that I have, you know, kind of loaded back here and we should be good to go. So I think like the Swampert engine is legit. I was very highly skeptical when I first saw it, but I think it definitely like, just earns its spot in Guardi. It's like way better than Oranguru. Oranguru is just like bad. And then like kind of what else do you really need in the deck? The thing is that since you're playing Sylveon, you could kind of just set the deck up. And then, you know, once you set the deck up, you don't really need supporters. You just want like Cynthia, maybe a Judge, uh, and maybe a Guzma. And that's really all you need. So not too terribly concerned about that. Now, this is a scary world. Okay, so I didn't exactly plan for this, and maybe I should have been a little bit more careful, right? Because now uh, my opponent could potentially just like chew through my whole squad with these guys. So that is like not terribly exciting, but I could knock out uh, two of these dudes like back to back. So that is an option as well if I have to, but that's not what I want to do. So let's, uh, I think we start out by, 
I, what do I need to knock out? I need like a lot, and I don't actually think that I could do it. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. I would need a choice band and an energy, and I need a lot. Yeah, so I don't think it's happening, but well, you know, you never really know. So let's see. Do I have? I have one choice band down. Okay, so let's start out by power drawing away this Ralts here. Uh, I'm probably just doing like, let's see, how many items do I have down? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they would need choice band to knock out this Guardi here, uh, which is a little bit stressful, but uh, I also don't necessarily want to just trade away this Ralts if I need it to help. No, I only got one. I only got one rare candy left. Who am I kidding? Yeah, we're doing this. Okay, so we're going to trade that away, see what we get ourselves into. I have Guzma. I have Cynthia. At this point, I don't think that I necessarily play Cynthia. I think I'm just saving that Guzma in my hand. So we're just going to get rid of the Cynthia here. We've got these guys. Okay, so I need to see, do I have a Curlia left in deck? I think I do. So I think I am going to go get these here. Uh, we're going to get that Curlia. And then how many energy do I have left in deck? That many. All right, so that's like enough to win the game with. I can I can work with this. Okay, and then we just need to, yeah, we need to knock this guy out in the active. And then we didn't discard any items. So my opponent still needs Choice Band and Garbodor to knock me out. So that's very good for us. And us getting the energy there off of the prize is very good as well, because that means that I can just go 369 and knock out that Mag Cargo. I have the two Swampert, my board position very solidified. So that is very good. And we should be kind of A-OK -okay to close this game out. I don't really think that there's anything my opponent could do. They attached the double colorless energy to the Zorark, so they're kind of projecting that they don't have Trash Alanche or maybe don't have access to it. Pretty sure anyways that they just attached that to the Zorak. I think that that's kind of what I saw, but I might have been distracted and just not paying attention. So that is possible as well. They got themselves another enhanced hammer. They're just kind of hoping at this point that I don't have it like that. And they're just hoping, I think, that they could just hit into my Guardi and kind of just run me out of resources. It's not really super possible because I do still have my Twilight GX. I could throw everything back into the deck if I had to, but I've set up the game to where it does that doesn't matter. I'm going to be fine, and I will be able to take a cheap knockout for game. The three Guzma has been very good. Definitely wouldn't back off of that. Uh, you know, Guzma is a game-winning card in this deck just all the time. So definitely think that that is great. And let's see what we got here. I think uh, at this point, uh, can I knock that? I want to see if I can knock out. I know I got win otherwise, but I want to see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. I would need, like, Let's see if we can get there with, uh, you know, with just the. I think we would need another fairy, right? Uh, and then let's uh, let's power draw and trade away that nest ball too. And let's see if we can get another fairy. I think we knock it out. There we go. So let's see if we evolve here. We're doing uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Let's see. Uh, we would accelerate too. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Yeah, so I think we got it there. Let's just Secret Spring onto yeah that one, onto the active. And then, yeah, we're going to put uh, Secret Spring. Oh, so many options onto the active there. And we got ourselves a good old knockout. So Infinite Force, and that is game, sir. So Guard of War GX still just has it. It's a great deck. I think it has a lot of options. I think that also the Swampert engine is low-key kind of busted. It really is the only draw engine that I have uh, set up and used in this current standard format that actually, you know, gets me kind of feeling confident in the draw of the deck. I, mean, I think playing like, you know, playing too many supporters that are just lackluster feels, you know, absolutely pales in comparison to getting this power draw out, which just allows you to see so many cards. And without any way to just limit uh, hands other than judge, it really just allows you to just constantly, you know, see tons and tons of cards and pull off really insane 
insane game-winning play. So that's it for Gardevoir GX Sylveon. Let me know, what do you guys think of Swampert in here? What do you all think of Gardevoir GX? What do you think of Sylveon? In the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, check out the Patreon stuff and the Etsy store stuff in the description below. Peace.